Happy Halloween Eve, everybody. All right, I have a very special treat for you. No tricks tonight. She can be seen acting in Curtiz, The Nun, and Book Club. And she can also be seen paddleboarding, jumping off boats in Croatia, and camping in Red Rock Canyon. She is a self-proclaimed tomboy. I'm going to tell her why she is a tom girl. And she's going to talk about her adventurous spirit and how you can blaze a trail for yourself. Stay tuned. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Oh yeah, a special song for you guys. And we have Lily Bourdon doing the Monster Mash for ya. Yeah, I don't know her, I think so. I don't remember actually. Could have done good one. <laughs> oh, Halloween is so fun. And I love your spirit already because tonight you showed up in costume. I'm wearing a costume, believe it or not. Uh -huh. Which matches uh, the studio perfectly. Yes, which I was well. not counting yeah. on. <laughs> but in case you can't guess what I am, I'll start with one clue. I don't know if you can you guys see that. Yep, see yep. that? It's round, it's blue and yellow. Yellow? Yellow. In case yellow. you can't see it, here's another clue. <laughs> I'm a banana. <laughs> yep. My I think my favorite part might be your necklace, which you have the organic, I'm organic banana. I'm yeah. an organic yeah. banana. <laughs> so cute. Not just any banana. I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Started off right with great spirit. Well, another thing that you do, which puts, is very much in the Halloween mood, is people can see you. You were in the movie The Nun. Yes. So, I mean, it doesn't get much more Halloween than that. No, that's true. It <laughs> came out right in time for the ho Halloween season. Mm -hmm. um, the premiere was in September, and I play Martha, who's the um, bar owner's wife mm -hmm. at the Bear Paw Inn. So the whole story takes place in Romania. So go see it because it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> and what was um, what was your favorite part about that role? Um, filming it is always my favorite part. Uh, going to Warner Brothers Studios, working on a stage that is just has so many historic has so much historic significance. Um, was amazing and working with James Wan and and um, and just all the actors and people there was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And there's such a following with all the Conjuring movies. And did you watch all those movies yes. prior? To yes, I did. Were you a fan? Like, did you watch them after you got the part, or were you a scary movie fan? I before? had seen Insidious and The Conjuring, and then um, and then when I got the part, I made sure to watch the Annabelles. And um, I'm excited about Annabelle 3. Mm -hmm. um, one of my friends booked um, a role in that. Oh, nice. So they're filming that. Um, and um, yeah, and then what, yeah, and then on is the first of its kind. It's the origin. Mm -hmm. So hopefully there'll be a nun too. They're already talking about that. Right. And I heard there was a little special something they did at the premiere that kind of freaked people out a bit. Can you talk, talk about that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I was one of the first people to arrive on the carpet, um, and which never happens, but somehow I made it on time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was really funny because I stepped on the carpet, and all of a sudden I feel these arms wrapping around me. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, I turned around, and those, those nuns that looked like statues were real people. Mm -hmm. And so that was... That was pretty, at first, terrifying. Not terrifying, but I was, like, not expecting it. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, this is really fun, and I went <laughs> along with it. I read that they were sitting in the first rows of the theater and that they, they got quite a few people scared by oh them. Oh, my gosh. I didn't see them in the theater, no. Um, but on the carpet, they were mm -hmm. lining the back, lining us in the back. Uh, that's so fun. It was fun. Um, were, would you like to do more in the, in the scary movie realm? Yeah, I did a, um, a movie uh, with Katrina Law a couple years ago called The Nesting and um, also called Apparition in, di in, a di in different territories. That was my first horror film mm. directed by Quinn Saunders. It's, um, it's available on iTunes and Amazon and all of those right now. I highly recommend it. It's a great horror mm. film to watch tonight mm -hmm. or tomorrow or whenever you get a chance. All Halloween week. Uh, yes, all Halloween <laughs> week. They could do a different film of yours each night. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if it's a good story and and um, fun people to work with, I'll do any kind of movie, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe mm -hmm. not any kind of movie, but you you know. Yeah. 
good I, I got creative, you. <laughs> good writing, good script, good mm-hmm. good people, fun director. You know. Mm-hmm. What um, in honor of the Halloween and your scary movies? What scares you? Oh my gosh, um, not much actually. Nice. Not much scares me. Um, I used to be scared of like silly things, you know, like even like just a public speaking, even mm-hmm. though I'm an actor, but speaking as myself was mm-hmm. really scary. So this is this this was once scary to me. Like, you know, um, I, I always loved being in character and and hiding behind a character yeah. and being pretend. Um, so so that's been fun, you know, warming up to this through mm-hmm. this process. Um, since since May, I'd say I've been you know, doing publicity since I've had a few films come come out and stuff. And mm-hmm. so I think I've, I hope I've gotten better. Same great know. to me. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Are you like a, an adrenaline, adrenaline junkie or do you like? I like ha- getting new impulses. So like you said, I like trying new things. Mm-hmm. Um, paddle boarding was new. There was not much adrenaline involved with paddle mm-hmm. boarding. There were stingrays. Those were kind of scary. But um, traveling, um, camping in different places um uh, i want to do more of that mm-hmm. okay great i'm gonna ask you more about that stuff a little bit later okay. on okay pull some pictures from your instagram um all right when it also so you were also in um book club yes yeah, and you're the dance instructor for that yes mm-hmm. did you see it i did yep. oh my gosh <laughs> so a bunch of my friends saw it on the plane and and so i was getting um text messages and stuff oh i just saw you on the plane in book club yeah that was an amazing role that was uh actually um you know it was it was a supporting role but it was i i hope it was memorable Mm -hmm. you know for sure it was yeah it was a fun character to play Mm -hmm. i've been playing more and more of those Mm -hmm. yeah i think those are great because you definitely you know stand out in the film and have (laughs) you know you have your moments and stuff yeah well it it was funny because uh at the premiere um there was an after party and I went up to people and introduced myself and they a lot of people didn't recognize me. Mm. And and then, you know, they were like, "Oh, you're her. You don't look anything like her." <laughs> Cuz she was so different than me. She spoke different, the character and mm-hmm. you know, had her hair different and mm-hmm. it was a very different role for me. Mm-hmm. And quite a like strong female cast on that one with Diane Keaton, Jane Fonda, Candace Bergen and Mary um Steenberger Steenberger. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sorry, yeah. Steenberger. And who who you had your those scenes with. Yeah, and she um, was so lovely mm-hmm. and and sweet and her daughter's name is Lily too so we bonded Aww. on that <laughs> that's very good yeah um what did you uh how much were you able to watch those other women act and what did you take away from them well I worked uh only with Mary Steenburgen but I've always been a fan of both Jane Fonda and Diane Keaton um uh one of my first books that I read in LA when I got here so I gotta read biographies was uh Jane Jane Fonda's biography and uh so so that was that was that was a goal that I had set out when I first moved mm. here ten years ago to work with Jane Fonda. So I got to do that. That's awesome. I love when things like that happen. Like you you picked up that book for a reason, you read yeah. that book for a reason, and yeah. then then it comes true for you in your life that you yes, did book a film yes. with her. And I, I, I follow so much of what she wrote in that book and um and just use it for my career and 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 inspiration and even quotes that she has in there and poems. Mm-hmm. What are some of those mentalities or ideas that that you um, use? She, there was, was is it E.E. E. Cummings? At the end of our exploring, we'll arrive where we started and know the place for the first time kind mm. of thing. So I guess that goes back to what I was saying is like, I think when you're young, um, at least for me, I didn't believe I could do it, even though I did everything I could to be here in L.A. And, you know, I, I gave myself all the opportunities so when 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 something like that happens, it's like a full circle moment. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's what that quote speaks to, you know, is is um, this sort of spiral shape of life and experience mm-hmm. of how you you learn things and then you go back and then you learn things and then you go back. You get tested constantly and mm-hmm. hopefully you've learned the lessons. And so when opportunities come, uh, you recognize them, you know, and. And then you've learned the lesson. I do think we're here to learn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Can you share what are some of those things that like you've learned over the years of acting, or you know, it's so interesting. Um, even though I've been here for what feels like an eternity, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it feels like I'm just starting out, and it's always felt like that every year. Um, 
it's sort of like the more you learn the less you know so so there's uh still so much to learn um but it's nice to be called in by the same people it's nice to have people say i saw you in this and you know and that's been kind of new mm -hmm. is people recognizing my work or what what i've sort of built you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to be such a tough industry and city. What is it that gets you through those challenging times or moments when maybe you may have doubted it? Hmm. That's really, that's a really interesting question. I think just, I have this sort of knowing that this sort of confidence, um, that's not really justified, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, but it's like a, uh, it's like a, a knowing in myself, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, my Chiquita bananas. So good. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure because I lost one before. Um, it's just this sort of feeling like I know it's all going to work out and it's all working out the way it's mm -hmm. supposed to. Mm -hmm. That's gotten me through it is saying, okay, did that. That happened. Shouldn't it, you know, whatever. And learning and, and, and taking that to the next level. And then also connecting with younger younger people. Like I have this sort of drive to give advice even if it's unsolicited which i've been like pulling back a little bit but i want to I, I so want to help younger people you know kids and and just uh act fresh actresses coming to la like i feel like there's a lot mm -hmm. that i that i know mm -hmm. you know i've been taking notes man <laughs> i do been, i have a whole note section in my phone that's awesome so well there may be some of young actors and actresses out there right now listening what are some of those advice things that you would want to say to them mm -hmm. Well, if you're just new here, just know that it's not going to happen right away. If it does, you're an exception. <laughs> You've got to build it um, and be patient. Be patient. Um, and then there's lots of, you know, advice that I, I don't know how, what else I can say right now. Like here, let me get my notes. Yeah. <laughs> what have you done as far <laughs> Maybe as I'll like, write a book. <laughs> I know I had a quote from you that you said, for me, the drive has always been to be creative and to stay creative. Don't limit yourself by putting yourself in a box. It's good for an actor to be producing and writing. So you do both producing for and writing. For so sure. Yeah. And that happened really organically for me. Like a lot of uh, my friends are really going after that. For me, it's just been uh, connecting with people over an idea or over a project. Usually the project approaches me as an actor and then I become somehow involved. Um, the one that I produced recently is Curtiz. Mm -hmm. It's a, a movie about um, Michael Curtiz and the making of Casablanca, which is one of the best films ever made. And um, also filmed in the same studio where I filmed the nun which was so uh -oh, interesting was for me you. yeah <laughs> and um or at least some of it was filmed in on stage seven um so what was i saying uh, oh God, so we're talking about pr pr the, we're talking about the producing and the writing and how that yeah. has become come kind of organically for you yeah so projects. so so i i was brought on as an actor to that project and i became a producer on it and um just as far as connecting them with a writer, uh, another producer connected them with a writer, and then uh, bringing on a couple of uh, just collaborators and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that won the grand prize at the Montreal World Film Festival. I was there. I'm so glad I went. Yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the first time I saw the movie. So it was really exciting to watch it in yeah. a festival in a beautiful city, in a beautiful theater with my, you know, collaborators. Mm -hmm. What was your role in that film? I played uh, Irene Lee, who is it? Um, she was Halby Wallace's assistant. She was um, story editor on Casablanca. She found mm -hmm. the play Everybody Comes to Ricks that the movie is based on. And um, so, but in this movie, she, she plays a sort of uh, rebel mm -hmm. in the system as a woman. She speaks her mind. Uh, you know, it's an interesting character. It's... Um, You'll, you'll ha I hope that it gets distribution in the States. I, I don't see why it wouldn't. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful film. It's black and white. Um, it's the 75th anniversary of the movie. So I hope that it finds a home here as well so that people can see it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Well, mm -hmm. look out for it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you've had some, uh, you know, other, a lot of people know you from Battlestar Galactica, Blood and Chrome, Becca Kelly. What was, mm -hmm. how's that role? Because she's kind of a more badass role yeah mm -hmm. yeah those have been finding me the badass roles mm -hmm. the mysterious 
um, that was an amazing experience. I sent my tape in and uh, and then I was called in for producers and directors and and they said I booked it in the room. So that was amazing. Um, oh, so you knew before you even got walked out? Like, uh, did... I felt it, but yeah. they told me later on. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying they that told I was you straight to room. wardrobe. Gotcha. That's gotcha. what they called it. I was like, <laughs> yes, more of those. More yeah, of those, yeah. please. And uh, it was my first um, projecting filming in, in Canada, in Vancouver. So it was a month in Vancouver, and it was a beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. experience. Would have been, um, what are your favorite characters or a character that you really, uh, you really like have learned something from? Uh, I mean, okay, this is going to sound like all of them, really, mm -hmm. but, hmm. Um, so I did a British TV show called Silent Witness, and uh, I played um, a lawyer who represented prostitutes, and I was... I was defending these prostitutes and that was really interesting. That was interesting because I interviewed people who were in that sort of thing. It was a recurring role, so it was a bigger one and I had time to, it was shooting in Hungary, so I had time to prepare. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was, that was amazing. Um, but really every character that I do, like even book club, like I took dance classes when I booked it. I was like, oh yeah, I have to get really good so I can, you know, teach these actors how to dance and mm -hmm. really take charge in the scene. I've learned languages, you know, from my roles, auditioning. I've learned words that I never knew, even though I consider myself, you know, well-read and educated and everything. Mm -hmm. um, went to college. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Mom and Dad. Yeah. Um, and I, I still learn so much, like even, you know, just jargon, like medical lingo. I auditioned for something that um, that was very diplomatic, used diplomatic language. So so I just learn things from from acting. So when I mm -hmm. go on these auditions, I, I don't just I don't just focus on getting the role. I focus on what can I how can I be a better person from this audition? Because whether I book the role or not is not in my control. Mm -hmm. But what can I take with me from this character? Because I know that this character somehow leads into something else that I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some other character. You know, like, I, and, and I can even look back the last few weeks and the auditions that I've been going on lead into, feed into somehow the next thing and mm -hmm. hopefully mm -hmm. the one that hits. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's kind of all of life too. Just always being open to yeah. what comes into your life and asking, okay, what is this? That's the teach fun. Me? What am that's I learning? the fun. Yeah. Otherwise, what's the point? I yeah. mean, it's not what it's. And also seeing the interconnectedness of things. Not to get too woo woo and crunchy here, but 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 seeing the greater connections in things. You know, we we're so goal oriented. Um, just thinking that's what I mean by thinking outside of the box too is not just producing and writing your own stuff but seeing where going with things because they feel right trusting your intuition that you're mm -hmm. gonna you're gonna you're gonna connect with someone or you're gonna you're gonna learn something from someone so you kind of follow go down that rabbit hole and see where it leads mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and mm -hmm. and the way to do that safely is to always know who you are write it down mm -hmm. take notes in your iphone <laughs> <laughs> yep. who am i what is it that i love about myself what is it that i'm you know that i'm flexible on what is it that i can that i can um compromise on you know mm -hmm. you know like for example um people are not willing to be pigeonholed into a certain character right i say if you're gonna get the role of i don't know if you, you're tired of playing the same role all the time, okay, I get it. But if you're, if some, if Hollywood or whatever industry sees you as fitting into this, like I've been playing a lot of um, this sort of mysterious, badass, uh, foreign characters, strong women. If that's how I'm seen, if that's if that's the archetype that I'm projecting or reflecting, then I'm going to go with that. And see where it leads me. Mm -hmm. It can lead me to something that is my dream role. Mm -hmm. 
Don't ask me what that is. I was just going to. Because I don't know. know. I was just going to open my next question. You, like, know, teed it up it. for me. I saw it in your just, eyes. I'm, I'm going to have you know. pull this just a little closer to you. Yeah, sure. that's right. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I was, <laughs> so, so you don't know? There's not one that you're, like, oh, There's man, not. No, no. Not I mean, yet. playing Irene Lee in this movie, Critique, playing a, an historical character like a real person who you know, who has a history and you can look them up and see their picture. That was really amazing. Mm -hmm. I would love to play people like that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who once lived, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. did something amazing or not amazing, but who did something, you know, that I can study. I'm also a, stu a good student, so I love to study. Mm -hmm. The real life stories are so fascinating to me, too, because knowing that somebody actually went through that and how they handled it and it's just fun, yeah. fun, fun characters. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I want to ask you because you had a, you posted a picture of yourself as a tomboy and on your Instagram, and you I did. said, um, "Yeah, you said, oh, what do I do for my tomboy? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah, Throwback Thursday to when I was a blonde little tomboy. Thanks for the photo, Dad. And I think we have oh that my photo. Gosh. We have that photo of you. Oh, when I was a little, you have that little one? girl. Yeah, photo 06 there." Juliet's gonna pull that up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So cute. So that's something I flagged because, so how, why would you describe yourself as a tomboy? <laughs> I was always playing with the boys, like at recess, I would race with them. I have the scars to prove it. Um, I was always athletic, I was always on the soccer team, I was always in tennis camp. My whole family is like that. They're very athletic. Um, so my dad always encouraged it. Um, but I also did ballet and girly stuff too, you mm -hmm. know, but I just always remember myself Maybe it's from the pictures is like having a dirty face and like just like Running around and coming home as late as I could from playing in the street with the kids mm -hmm. um, I also spent a lot of time in Hungary where kids do play a lot in the street and uh, You know, so I, I grew up with these sort of country kids I was and and there was something else that I was thinking of just today it came to me just today um, my mother's line of women uh, they all worked the earth they were all like um, had their grew their own vegetables my grandmother has chick her own chickens she mm -hmm. still grows her own vegetables and she's 84 85 um, my mom grows some of her own vegetables it's obviously less than my grandmother did, but if I trace back all those women from my from my mother's side, they all worked the earth, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, they were farm farmer families, so I'm like, I need to do that. And I just thought of that today. I'm like, I need, I can't just not continue that yeah. somehow. So, but I I grew up in that, like I grew up in the fields like that. So mm -hmm. I, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I have to yeah. find a way to have an urban garden or something. <laughs> yeah. And how does that kind of tomboy attitude fuel like who you are now? Man, I don't, I don't know. I guess it depends on how you define what a man and woman is, which is, which is, um, which is interesting too. You know, we're, we're asking that a lot these days. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think it's an honor to be a lady. I love, I love what that encompasses for me it's it's really fun to be a lady and to behave like a lady <laughs> and all that stuff but i do like to get my hands dirty and i do like to be in nature and be in the wilderness and um i do uh i do love the wild women in the stories mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i guess for me being a tomboy is being a wild woman mm -hmm. a, a wildish woman as as um as Clarissa Pinkola Estes says in Women Who Run With the Wolves. Great book. Yeah. Yeah. And that's perfect. But I just want to say <laughs> should, that is exactly what this whole show is based off of because I grew up very much the same and mm -hmm. I was always a, a tomboy. But I also loved fashion and being a girly too. Hello. And say, I know, banana. <laughs> I have fun. I said I would but, do it yeah, at some I know, point. I love it. Yeah. These are the pants, <laughs> the pants that go with the banana outfit. Yes. I love. Yellow. <laughs> yeah, but for us, the, the Tom girl was the perfect embodiment of the tomboy and the girl who act, who also d does enjoy fashion and, you know, um, a lot of the things more associated as girly, girly things that, yeah. that as we get older, um, we still, but we still like to go get muddy and get in the dirt and do all those things and outdoorsy oh, things. Yeah. So anyway, now I want you to say that you are a Tom girl. You're in the Tom girl tribe. I am. <laughs> I it's am. awesome. High five. Yeah. Fist bump, whatever. 
<laughs> awesome. So speaking of that, I want to talk about some of your um, some of those adventurous things that you like to do. So I, we talked a little bit about the paddle boarding. So I have a picture of you doing the paddle boarding. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a new adventure that you tried. Yes, with another tomboy friend of mine, actually. Mm-hmm. She suggested it, and I said, okay. And there was a great deal, and we, we went and tried it in Marina Del Rey. That was Marina Del Rey mm-hmm. Beach. And we saw seals and, um, yeah, what uh, stingrays and stuff, and had to watch out for those. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> had to yeah. shuffle. It's so relaxing, it is, isn't it? It's and really relaxing. And... It's um, quiet. Um hard to have a conversation because everyone can hear what you're saying on that the boat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, your voice really travels on the water. Yeah. You think, yeah, you can. Yeah, <laughs> we were trying to have like a really private conversation and I was like, people sitting on the boats having a beer like, I heard that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. Um, you've also called yourself a more of a mountain woman. So we have some photos of you from Red Rock Canyon. Um, what is it about the mountains and being out there that you love? Man, that was a beautiful experience. That was Red Rock Canyon in Mojave, I guess, or Cantil. I don't know what the exact town is. Mm-hmm. But it's like a two and a half hour drive from here. And my girlfriends told me, let's go do it. Let's take some cameras and take some pictures. I needed some publicity shots. And my friend Roxanne, uh, who took that picture, that was just with our phone. Um, but she took some amazing shots of us. Um, it's the, the picture that you're using on the opening page actually uh-huh. was by Roxanne. And we we just camped and cooked on an open flame. Mm. Um, it was really windy, so uh, I couldn't sleep because the tent was shaking and there was all kinds of stuff flapping. And I had earplugs, but it, they didn't work. So I just pulled my sleeping bag out of the tent and just slept under the stars wow. there. And I slept so well. So nice, isn't it, just to get out and, just, and actually see the stars, too. And, I, and to wake up, like, I was like, it's a completely different feeling to wake up outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. You're just fresh and ready to go, too. Yeah, yeah. that oxygen is, mm-hmm. there's nothing like it. Mm-hmm. Great. Now, you also, we have pictures, I think, of, well, one in, in London. Is this London, correct? Is that London? Oh, yeah. Oh. I had a film premiere mm-hmm. in June in London. Yeah, for a movie that's out now um, called Welcome to Curiosity. Um, it's on Amazon, so you can you can watch it actually. That that one right now that's up right now is uh-huh. in Croatia. Same. This summer has been amazing. I did so much this summer. I went. And I traveled so much and had so many great projects um, that I worked on and that came out. Um, that one is in Croatia, um, in uh, Zadar, just on an island just off of Zadar, and we rented a boat and went out with my brother and my mom and my my brother's wife that's having a wonderful meal fresh fish straight out of the sea mm. with a nice cold beer yeah and the history but. there is amazing the the, the architecture mm-hmm. and the, the the stone that stone wall is probably like a thousand years old where's your favorite place or adventure that you've ever been on hmm that's a great question I always love going um, back home to Hungary, to Budapest. That's where my roots are. I always discover something new about it. Um, and my family's there, so my mom, my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, I miss them more and more. It's getting really hard to be far away from them. That You know, it's a long flight. Yeah, It's a long flight. Um, so always when I get a chance, when I have some free time, I go there. I'm not swear. That's my mm-hmm. favorite place. It's heart. Yeah. Yeah, it's my heart. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's good. Well, you also, um, you, I want you to talk a little bit about um, your work with autism. Yeah. Um, so I, I helped start an organization with a friend of mine called Carice Hutchings um, called Guidance Autism. And uh, I started helping her uh, teach dance classes to kids with autism. I trained to be an autism movement therapist. And I haven't, I have to admit, I haven't been going as much recently um, because of the distance. Like I live, it's in the valley, it's at ML1 on Saturdays. So hmm. if you are interested, go to www.guidanceautism.com. We welcome volunteers. Uh, we have training for teachers. Um, we're trying to get into schools. Um, Carice uh, is, is uh, she has, we have a board and everything. So. Um, we're looking to expand, um, and I would love to have, I live on the west side, so I would love to have some schools mm-hmm. there or something. So 
right now uh, we're just kind of on hold, but we're still doing the, the regular classes, mm-hmm. but it would be great to expand. Mm-hmm. Sure. What a wonderful thing you're doing. Yeah. 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 It's a wonderful thing working with, with, with kids and, and these kids especially are so uh, loving and connected to something that we don't even understand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, now let's move to each week here. We do a Tom Girl of the Week. Uh, this week, I have an organization. I not only think they've talked about them before here because they are one of my favorites. You have to follow their Instagram account. Um, they're called Babes Right Out. So at Babes Right Out. They just got done. October was their month for their big event. Uh, so this is pictures uh, of the event that they do. And they go out to Joshua Tree. And it's, you know, all women, all on their motorcycles. There's things like this where there's um, Bitwell does a lot of things with helmets and d- designing your own helmets um so there's a lot of vendors out there they have music um so ladies if you are big wow. into writing it's on my bucket list i have not made it yet but i'm dying to go and then they also have a sister group called babes in the dirt so if you're into dirt bike riding uh they also have a, an event like this for dirt bike riders so it's really cool even in just watching the last year how big their organization has grown and has more and more women find out about it the, the photos just look fantastic and it looks just like an absolutely fun thing to do um their slogan they say good times good friends two wheels and so they have <laughs> ladies only riding and camp out events That's amazing. Um, and they're on the east coast west coast all over so there's no excuses wherever you live to go ahead and check it out and, and plan yourself a fun weekend uh with them all right so back i need to, to get my motorcycle right. license because i'm terrified so i should do it well it's funny because i um i've always wanted to i used to ride dirt bikes at the my friend had a farm in iowa so that was fun but it's like motorcycle riding in la is a little different like i'm yeah. scared to be, it would on, be on a track or like right, yeah. some, somewhere like on a trail like but yeah. even even sometimes like uh, i go up to um i go up the two to the forest to the mm-hmm. angeles yeah. national mm-hmm. forest and even there once there was a helicopter picking a guy off the side of the cliff so it's it's scary. I would yeah. be very careful. If I did it, it would be very, like, maybe on a track, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of like the, the dirt biking idea, too, because then yeah. I could crash in the dirt. I know you can still get hurt, but it's, like, better right. than the freeway for me. Or, like, <laughs> right a, like now, but... in the desert, like, a little bit further yeah. east, long country road, like Palmdale or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That I would do. All right. Well, we'll have to get our license, and okay. then we're going to one of these events. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. For sure. All right. So let's talk about back to you. Uh, what do you, what kind of work do you have coming up that people are going to be able to see you doing? Well, there's a few movies that are um, still in the raising money stage. Um, I'm trying to help with that as well. So uh, there's – and then just tons of auditions, you know. Mm-hmm. Um so I'm still waiting to see what the universe is um, has in store for me. I do have a, a, a few films coming out. Um, I have Beneath the Leaves coming out with Melora Walters, who is one of my favorite actresses. I don't know if you remember her from Magnolia, but she's done a lot of amazing work since then. And um, Sir Darius Blaine, who was my partner, and, and Doug Jones. And then um, I have a film coming out with Nicholas Torturo called uh, Escape Puzzle of Fear. And I and it's about um, a bunch of psychopaths who escape from mm. an institution and um, somehow break into an escape room and just <laughs> mess with everyone. Yeah. And I'm one of the psychopaths. And, oh, that, <laughs> that sounds like that'd be a blast. Yeah, I, it always, was. I always think about that around this time too, like when you go to haunted houses and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's always still kind of in the back of my mind that like, it just this... be like. Somebody crazy could get in here or, you know, kill you. You do have those thoughts. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I wish they would go into only those places because yeah. then we would know to stay away from those. But yeah. Yeah. Not to get too much into politics, but right. when it's where people are praying and shopping and with their families trying to, you know, yeah. it's it's pretty terrifying. Not going to lie. Pretty yeah. sad. It sure is. It's and like a war zone. And it, yeah. And we've had way too much of it. It's Yeah. And honestly, like, even going back to Hungary, I feel much safer. How crazy. I mean, Hungary has always been a wonderful place. Um, It's been through a lot, you know, but the last few decades um, have been have been really wonderful for Hungary. Um, You know, uh, it's just been 
blooming and, and the film mm -hmm. industry is booming. We're nominated, we've been nominated for Oscars four years in a row, so the film yeah. industry is doing really well. Film in Hungary. Mm -hmm. Film in yeah. Hungary, hashtag yeah, film in Hungary. <laughs> <laughs> and we all need to take a trip there. Mm, and my family's see. there, yeah. so what can beat that? Yay for your family. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, last thoughts before we go. Um, tips for people who, you know, you are such a trailblazer and out there doing your thing. Um, you. Tips for people out there to, you know, bla how they can blaze their own trail and go after, you know, find their creative passions hmm. uh, make time make time for it set time aside we're so busy um, especially in LA I drive so much I feel like that time could be spent writing or um, doing something creative and then also spend time doing nothing I read somewhere that you're supposed to spend part, at least part of your day doing nothing mm -hmm. so whatever that is for you <laughs> mm -hmm. do it or don't do it but, um, <laughs> Because creativity, you need to make space for it, you know, and I have to, that's something that's a note to self as well. I'm going to write that in my phone yeah. too. Mm -hmm. make, make more time to set aside, to um, to come up with, also come up with, plan, come up with plans to really, um, I used to not believe in the five-year plan. And boy, I'm realizing now that it's, it's a good thing mm -hmm. to have the plans because they will happen. Mm-hmm. There is just something about writing it down and writing it down and, and envisioning, envisioning it. it. Yeah. yeah, it's mm -hmm. gonna happen. When I was younger, I didn't believe it. Um, I didn't believe in this power that we have, and mm -hmm. I'm seeing it. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it in my own life that the seeds I planted years ago happened. Things mm -hmm. I ignored that I didn't believe happened. You know, it's you really do create your own mm -hmm. your own fate. So I can't I can't emphasize enough how how important it is to be in touch with yourself, whatever that means for you. Going into nature once a week, do it. Uh, meditating in the morning, if that's what it is, praying, whatever it is that connects you to yourself, always be always have that that connection going. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. Well, it was such a pleasure to have it you. It was on. such a pleasure to be here. So much fun, and I love again, love the spirit and the banana costume. So great. Thank you. <laughs> Tell everybody out there again where they can follow you everywhere on all your social media. Sure, it's just my name. Um, so at Lily Bourdon. Um, so I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us again. I'm JJ Jorgens, and you can follow us everywhere on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Tom Girl and Tom Girl TV. We'll see you here again next week, and happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! <laughs> Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.